broadcasting it again. Um, okay, so it right. Right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the second um, England women versus Scotland women um, friendly match. So this is a rematch from the one that happened last year. Uh, today we have three rounds for you. The first one imminently um, will be Anna Price and Alice Taylor, and we'll have two more rounds at half past one and three o'clock. We're delighted to have Chris Bray with us to commentate. And say, so I will fire up the uh, the game, and we'll be starting very shortly. Right. Yeah, they're on nil nil. Yeah. Good morning. This is Chris Bray commentating from the comfort of my home in London. So uh, I look forward to an enthralling nine ma nine point match between Alice and Anna. Uh, I'm ready to go. So they are ready to go. I think they're just waiting for the go right. signal. Good. They've got uh, the go now. Um. And I can see the board. Great. Hopefully this is all working. Uh, we have the opening roll um, with Alice. Alice is Gemini. Anna is fish out of water. Uh, and... Alice has played a 5-4. So if they're happy to go, we can go. <laughs> I think Anna's waiting for the... Yeah, okay. Right. So... Ooh. These four spot. Yeah, okay. So 5-4 is not nowadays played the way that it's just been played um, as an even match score. Um, computers a long time ago worked out that you should split with the 4, 24, 20, uh, if you have 5-4 as an opening roll. If you're trailing in the match, then this play is correct. But at an even score, you should be playing 13 to 8 and 24 to 20. But Everyone has their own individual style and people are comfortable with their own opening moves. So I never really tend to criticize people too much for their choice of opening move because they must be familiar with what they're trying to do when they make a move. So it looks like we are ready to go. The clock is paused. So they've got two minutes per point for the match. Um, I wonder what's the small technical issue in so much as Anna seems to have lost a minute of time on her clock. But viewing it from this as a spectator, the clocks are still showing 18 minutes each, so I'm not quite sure what's happened. We'll try and sort it out. Let's hope they recommence shortly. Two minutes per, per point is quite generous in terms of modern backgammon speed. Uh, 90 seconds per point is more common nowadays for online matches. Two minutes, I think, is better. Oh, we're up and running. Uh, Anna has lost a minute somehow, but anyway, both players are roll 6-5 uh, and are running away. So, uh, double three, this is going to be quite easy. You make the 10 point and you make the 5 point. So, a significant advantage here to Alice, a reminder that her name is Gemini and Anna is fish out of water. 3-6 is probably one of the only rolls that stops the cube coming. Um, and 3-2. So now for the first decision. It's not obvious that making the, the defensive three was correct there. So now you've got a holding game. Uh, A small technical issue initially. Uh, 
Right, so again, uh, okay, sorry. So Alice has a 14 pip advantage at the moment, um, not enough to double. Um, and in fact, running off the, uh, uh, so hang on. So a double is being offered at this point. So this is not a, technically a double. A six pip lead in a race is insufficient. Yeah. All right, so we're still suffering technical issues here. Settings must be wrong, Julia. Okay. So, oops. So this is, so that, so they're proceeding very rapidly at the moment. Um, so Black needs to stop and Alice needs to stop and think about the cube here. Um, so she has a 24 pip lead. She has one checker back to two for uh, Anna. Uh, double four is probably a market loser, realistically. <clears throat> and certainly if Anna, right. So now she needs to think whether she's too good to double and play on. Um, or whether she should cash the game. It's an easy double and drop, um, but for some reason she's not. Maybe because she can't see the pip count, but in, in general terms, Black's position is very, very strong. So again, she should stop, think, she's 25 pips ahead. Um, so to, to play on without the cube um, is very, Strange. So white's catching up by rolling a bunch of doubles, but this is still a double and probably still a pass. So now, do you make the bar point or do you play safe and cash? So I think now we've got a 22 pip lead. There was no need to make the bar point because it only pays off to 6-6. Six, six. Um, they're playing very quickly without a great deal of thinking at the moment. So one of the things you learn in backgammon is it's impossible to play backgammon well very quickly unless, unless you're world class. So every role, every role is a doubling decision and you need to take the time to work out. So now we're still 12 pips ahead, right? So 12 pips ahead, she also, Alice also has threats, um, so she could make the bar point, make the three point, point on uh, the one point, and that was double and correct, double and drop, which was correct. So now it's 2 0 to Alice. Let's hope they calm down a bit and start to use the time that they've got on the clock. So the 5 2 is for now. Anna is trailing, so making the point is correct. Now, this is a sort of move where you 4 3 for Anna, where she needs to spend some time. So you either run away all the way, 22 15. So this, that was not a good move because it allows a double hit. Uh, and Anna should hit twice here. So she should hit again. Yeah. So. Double five. So now this is double pass. If um, the only question is whether you're too good to double, uh, potentially you could take a roll there. There's very little that would enable um, 
blank to take next time. So the two most, oh, it was taken, wow. Um, so that would have been a massive error uh, in terms of the take. The question is, can black get an anchor? So, so black has managed to survive the early attack here. Um, comes in with a four, and because she's got the weaker board. Now, again, <clears throat> they are playing far too quickly. So if I can't analyze it in the four or five seconds they're giving me, it means they are making mistakes, basically. So she should not hit here. She has the anchor, you just make the four points. Uh, and again, make the points in order if you can. So Anna is three pips ahead, so she should have played for some contact there. Um, she's got an anchor. When you have an anchor, you can play a lot more loosely than if you don't have an anchor. So. Black has been very lucky to get away with accepting the initial cube here. Um, and again, you, so you have to stop and think, do you play 13 to 10 and 6 to 3 twice here, or even 8 to 5? Probably 8 to 5 if you're going to, if you're going to do this, you know, 6 to 3, never give up your board. So one of the rules. Uh, and Anna is now running off the bar point so she should look at other moves um, there's a number of opportunities here because black has voluntarily crunched her board i would be looking as white at playing 13 to 8 and 6 to 3. Um, this makes attempts to make the game a race with a after the roll anna is only one pip ahead so I doubt whether running now is correct, um, but equally well, uh, it's yeah, it, it's not the time to go. So Alice can really make a board with eight to six, and then decide what to do with the other um, two ones. Again, you've got to put the checkers in play. So let. Black has three checkers on her two point, which is not good. Um, one of them is not working for a living. So again, now Black should slot two points. And again, still got that spare checker on the two point, which is not working for a living. As McGreal used to say, the checkers need to talk to you and ask to work for a living. Um, at the moment, Black's checkers aren't working for a living. 6-4 for, oh, this is not the time to go. So racing when behind, and Anna should hit there probably. Um, and again, mm -hmm. uh, possibly not actually because she's only got a two-point board. So this is now turned into a pure race. So we've now got a five-pip race. Oops. And... This is fine. Pretty much everything is okay. Right. So the players, the players, the players have no sight of the pip count, which is exactly what you have in normal live play. So. If they don't have the pip count, which obviously they don't, then they need to take the time to do the count manually. Um, so you cannot rely on being given the pip count by a computer. If, if you're going to play good backgammon, uh, you need to be able to count. So they should both stop, do a count, and then adjust that count as each roll hits the board. So currently the pip count is 78 to 88. It's now one pip race. So obviously we can see the pip count as spectators, but the players can't see. So if they've got, uh, they, they need to be take a common sense view of this and slow down and do a manual count. So again, and now 
black has a perfectly may may have a perfectly valid redo. The only reason she may not have a redouble is that she already leads in the match. Now she must stop. She's twelve pips ahead. This is double on pass. Okay. So now you've allowed white the opportunity to get back into the game. Uh, so white's on a freebie at the moment. This game should have been over. Uh, that's wrong. So you can take two checkers off, surely. Four and one. <clears throat> Four and two. Now, as as this progresses, they must stop and do a count. Um, and again, you even if you're not good at mental arithmetic, you can train yourself to count back gun positions. Um, and here, this will now be obviously a drop. Uh, it's now 4 0 to Alice, and the game is proceeding at a furious pace. Uh, now, if you're leading, then uh, making the two point is normally viewed as incorrect. Um, you want to play ho um, holding games and running games if you're leading. Uh, if you are trailing, you want to play complications and prime versus prime and blitzes. Okay. Black has got that one the wrong way around. So now she she's rolling well there. So now three and four. So Time to stop and think again. Um, she's got a 10 pip lead in the race. She has uh, an advantage in terms of home board points. She has a lot of threats. So the position in front of you should have been a double. Um, woo. No, no, no. So that should have been hit twice with the 6-1. So now there is no double. Uh, this is clear. She will hit 24 to 16. Again, you can't make a move if you don't see it. So, judging by the fact that she hasn't hit 24 to 16, for some reason she is not seeing the play. And she has hopefully going to see it now. Come on, hit with a five. Sometimes when you play online, you miss things that you would make an overboard play. Luckily she's found it. So 5-2. So again, a game that should have been played with the Q1-2. Now this is no double. Um, double five. One, two, one, two, three, four. So number of ways of playing this. She can make the three point and play 16-11. Yeah. Which now you play 16-11 with the last one. All right, so makes white play the penalty of having to give up her anchor if she hits. Five and three, she will make a three point. So white should not give up the anchor um, anytime soon. Black, on the other hand, is playing a straightforward game. All she needs to do She's 39 pips up, 45 after the roll. Her only mission in life is to escape the rear checker. So this move, this 5-1, should be played 11 to 6 and 24 to 23. Okay. Double four is an excellent roll for white, so that she'll make the two points. Yeah. Now black will have some funny entering numbers. Hello. No, you do not make the nine point. You make the inner. The home board point, yeah. So now there will be some funny entering numbers. And now trailing nil four. Okay, so she's it's an easy take because she has a 27 pip lead in the race. There are two open points. There are very few gammons in, the, in this position. So uh, it's probably a slightly premature double. Uh, they both have four point home boards. White has minimal threats in this position. Double two, double four, double one, maybe double six are, are all useful. But if your only useful roles are doubles, then it's likely not to be a cube. So let's see what Alice does here. And again, at least she's now taking the time to think. But um, They've both only used about two minutes on the clock, and 18 minutes is a long time in backgammon. So the double was incorrect and the drop was incorrect there. Difficult game, backgammon, by the way. 
So it's now four on. Um, White has made the better point. 13 to 8 is correct there. Now 6 4. You can make the 2 point. You can run to the 14 point. You can run out with the 6 and down with the 4. You can make the 2 point. So this looks a reasonable play. So if you're ahead in the race, race. So after the race, you'll be 9 pips up. 6 4 now. Again, the option there was to hit with the 6-4, which might have looked slightly odd, but now she's fanned. Now, White should play on for a gallon, right, which she's correctly doing. So she has to work out how best to position her builders to make the crucial points, which are the four point. Um, and again, she's got, ooh, lucky roll, double two now. Again, there, because she's miles behind in the race, she should have made her four point uh, and made White's getting home, get, the getting home of a chicken check is much more difficult. Plus, making the four point gives her an asset. Um, now she doesn't have the asset. Um, so White has doubled based on the race, but again, this is a very easy take. Oops. Uh, so... Double was possible, but it was a trivial take. So, right off we go. It's four two. Double six is easy to play, and again, this game is being played at lightning speed. You can't play back down like that, unfortunately. So, you need to utilize the time that is available. So, with the double two, uh, she'll have a seventeen pip lead after the race. So she's ahead in the race, so she should probably race. Um, holding on to the anchor is probably incorrect in that particular case. But now White is ahead due to a fortuitous double six. Um, five and three should slot the five points here by playing 13 to five. Okay, so now we've got a one pip race. So. Nothing much is going out. So this here, you come off the eight point, you make the five point, and you start the three point. Uh, there's very little skill in these this type of position. They're basically waiting for a, a double. Uh, that was very wrong to come off the anchor. It gives White the opportunity of a not a game winning shot, but a, a, a roll to gain a huge advantage. Uh, basic theory of mutual hold game which is what this was was basically you sit on the anchors until you you roll a double or you'll squeeze off the anchor um so again this is not a double for white because even a hit that is is not conclusive in any way the race is level uh, 119 pips each so the only reason for doubling here is if you miscount the position Mind you, it's been done in the World Championship uh, the year before last. Uh, both players, and they were two of the best players in the world, miscounted a position by 10 pips. One doubled, which was incorrect, and the other one dropped, which was even worse. So mistakes happen. Now again, White has got 13 to 4 is all right. But now again, we're in a pure race. So they should have stopped to do a pip count. And then work out from there what they're doing. You need to get the checkers in before you can take them off. So you don't need to uh, basically play purely. All you're interested in is getting the checkers in and off. So White has taken the lead by 12 pips with that 6-5. Um, there is no role that will enable her to... Uh, possibly 2-1 actually by black. She, white may have a double, but with everything else, um, it, the game will continue. So I'm assuming that Anna is pausing to do a pip count. Uh, after the roll, she's 12 pips ahead, so the 6-5 played like this is correct. 
She will then have six crossovers left to get a check now. 2-1 is interesting, so that was probably the only role where White could now consider doubling. So you need to count crossovers. So eight, uh, she had a double, that was a double and pass, probably, especially as she was trailing. So I'm assuming she's not keeping a running pip count. So when bearing in, you want to put checkers. You can never have too many checkers on your four point, is the old adage for um, bearing your checkers into the board. Uh, the last thing you want is a gap on the four point while you've still got checkers on your five point and six point. This is still a double. Um, so she's now increased her lead even more. This is now double and pass. I think so. Yeah, 13 pip lead is enough. This is clear double, clear pass. Yeah. So 13 pips is too much. Black also has three crossovers to get all her checkers home. White has only one uh, checker to bear in, so that's two less crossovers. Two less crossovers is worth a pip. So now it's 4 3. Correct drop. Um, now 4 1. Uh, computers proved a long time ago, probably 30 years ago, this is the correct play with 4 1. And the correct response with 5 1, so no excitement yet. 4 3. Now, which, which point do you make? The offensive one or the defensive one? So. Because white has no home board of her own, making your own five point is correct here. If black was way, way ahead, then it would have been correct to make uh, her opponent's five point, but this was perfectly good. Now you either play 13 to five here or you run away 23 15. Uh, what's the race? She's ahead after the race. Um, close call this one, so this is not. Quite so obvious. I think I, I would be quite happy with a, a, with this. But now make the five point with the other two. So if you have the six point, five point, and four point, that's called the rack. Um, it's called the rack because it puts immense pressure on your opponent or tortures them in old-fashioned terms. Um, so you're much better off holding the five point than you are holding. Uh, the bar point because it's an inner board point. So uh, this is the correct play. So it gives you a long term advantage. Okay. One, two. This is totally wrong. So hopefully she won't make this move. And that's also totally wrong. You know, you're not using the, the dice roll that you're being given. So. Okay, good play. So now, um, because of that, black is in a bit of trouble here. So that offensive board is, is now quite strong. So black has to decide whether to run away with one checker, play 23 to 16, at which point she'll be ahead in the race. And this play allows white to attack. And again, you, you, that was a crucial, volatile position where and she should hit with the five. She's got the better board. She's trailing in the match. So that is the five and play the two down. No, you're not interested in making your opponent's four point. You're interested in blitzing. So four one. So now in and now has to hit eight to four. Um, there is no other sensible play you, you can't play this quietly there is no quiet for now again anna should stop to think here um five pips behind so moshi the number one player in the world has a very simple rule you take at least 12 seconds over every doubling decision uh, and if you haven't taken 12 seconds you have not considered all the aspects of the position so we're now, Anna is correctly doubling this position. Six is a good, one's a good, three's a good, five's a good. Um, she has a 12-pip lead in the race, and this is a drop. 
because it's been taken. So now you hit, the hit protects the other blocks. Um, there is no other sensible way of playing this. So Alice has been rewarded with some very good rolls. She, she took a, a big drop earlier and now she's dropped another one. Um, now, how do we play this? 5-1, you're probably going to play 23 to 18 and then you should hit again 5 to 4. Now hit. Now, just playing it very, very um, uh, safely, I think is the, the phrase I'm looking for. So, and if you look at White's position, it's sort of stripped everywhere. Uh, so it's, it's a fragile position, despite having all of those points. Um, she's struggling a bit. So six three, it's probably logical to make the two point here. Um, anything else allows. White to have the initiative. So I don't know what else she could be looking at. Can't move the rear checker, which is the one that she'd really like to move. Um, everything else is allows White an attack. So this looks very logical. Double two. So six one. You can make the bar. Uh, and again, you're leading, you're not trying to play for complications. So hitting eight to one, for example, would not be a good idea. Uh, I would play this calmly, 13 to seven, eight to seven, yeah, it's fine. Hands again. Now, in a nine point match with the cube on two and winning four three, it will be a long time before black can redouble this position because if the cube gets to four, then white will be um, very happy to whip it back and up to eight and play this game for the match with the slightest chance. So here the two should be played up. That's fine. So White needs to release two of her rear checkers and get them moving. What is that? Four two. Okay. Ooh, double two. All right. So make the three point. Easy to play, can't move the rear checkers, can't move the checkers on the six point, so this will not take long. Uh, but it is taking long, okay. So, I don't know what else uh, Alice can be considering here, unless you can't see the play. So to reiterate what I said earlier, when you play online, you sometimes cannot see a play that you would see very easily over the board. So you just hear, you just make the three point. Yeah. Yay, there you go. Right, now white will come in and hit. <coughs> So now it's time to stop and think again. Yeah, the five hit is correct. Here comes that. Now, how do you play the three? Uh, there's not a lot of advantage to having that check on the 24 point, so this looks correct. One and six. So what's the race? The race is very equal. Um, coming out looks correct. Five and two. She can make her 16 point which for want of anything better to do is okay. Um, this is wrong, you don't voluntarily expose a blot um, when your opponent's got a four point board. So that was, that was very badly wrong. Um, here, you're gonna hit, you know, play 18 to 16 and 18 to 14. Got to hit with the two and then the only logical four is to move another checker off the bar point, which leaves no return shots. Uh, so should find this play, I think. Um, that's 
definitely hugely wrong, unfortunately. Um, so I don't know what she feared, you know. So black has got a very inflexible position here. So with you know, five checkers on one point is hardly ever good. Um, the six is forced here. So she's going to have to play 18 to 12. Uh, and then she's not going to expose the second block. So you play six to one. Uh, she's not going to play 18 to 13 and leave something like 29 shots. So I don't know again why she's taking her time here. There's only one logical five. Yeah. Okay. Six three is a miss, which is not great. Um, so 132. So the race will be dead level after this play. Um, so was that the time to go? That's really the question. So black can now play all four checkers across to the her uh, twelve point because she will then be a long way ahead in the race. So again, this is that's I don't believe that this is correct. Um, so you are 24 pips ahead, you've left an 11 shot. Um, although it's not beautiful, um, you are a long way ahead. So this is the logical move, white will make, right. So now is black going, 5-3 uh, is a very awkward roll, very awkward roll indeed. In fact, it leaves a shot, whatever she does. Uh, very unfortunate for black here. Um, how best to play it? Uh, you can leave a single shot by breaking up her board with six to one, six to three, or she makes the board and has a five point board and plays 12 to nine, leaving her opponent twos and fives to hit. Now if she breaks a board up, it's going to be incredibly difficult to get those black checkers home without leaving further shots. So risky though it is, it looks as if 12 to 9, 6 to 1 is the correct play. But we'll wait and see what, what Alice does. But the, the problem is, obviously, if you play 12 to 9 with 3, you then haven't got any other 5 other than 6 to 1. So she'll be desperately searching for a an alternative play. So she's played the virtually. Now the problem from here is um, you're not going to cover uh, that blot on the 20 point next time. So as we will see, it's going to be very difficult. So now black's going to play 12, 6, 5 to 1. Yeah. Oh, right to so that's not well. So she'd be racing when behind, so she's four pips behind. So she should not have broken contact. So when you're ahead in the race, race when you're behind in the race, seek contact. So here you need to think about how you're going to position the checkers, that's, that's fine. A, re a reminder, you can never have too many checkers on your four points. Uh, you need to take two crossovers here. So nearly anything is okay, but piling two checkers on the same point is likely to be wrong. So here I would have played eight to four and six to five. You don't need safety. What you need is checkers on the key points. The key points from Black's perspective of the five point and the four point. So White's run incorrect play of the double six earlier has paid off. She is now actually seven pips ahead. No, and again that should have the two should have played six to four. You must put checkers on your four point. Got away with it so far. So it's a one pit race, but the gaps on Black's three point and four point are going to hurt her. 
Okay, so now white is way ahead and a huge favourite, but of course she's already doubled, so she can only win the game with the checkers. Um, so barring a double six, then that's the end of that one. Okay. So Anna has turned this round from a 4-0 deficit to lead 5-4. Uh, if you look at match equity tables, which I know a lot of people don't, uh, she's roughly 59% to win, win the match from here. So now, black is now trailing, so you need to tailor your checker play to the score. So she should now be playing for complications. Uh, uh, so 6-2, you can make the four point or you can cosy up, but this looks correct, particularly as she's trailing. So now does Anna hit? If she does, the three is a bit awkward, so she sh could potentially, certainly while leading, have looked at the, she could just run a checker away, uh, normally when in doubt hit, so the hit may well be right. The hit protects the split checkers in Black's home board. So she's looking at the running play here. The problem with this is it strips the midpoint. Um, Okay, so went ahead in the race, race, so, well she wasn't ahead in the race, but having four blocks would not have been a good idea. So 4-3, I think probably just play 18 into 11, that gives good coverage of the outer board. So 5-4, so 4-5, so going to be ahead in the race, or marginally, and pretty much nothing better than this. Um, and of course what Anna has missed, so the check on the 24 points is known as a goalkeeper, that needs to stay there uh, to provide as much coverage of Black's boards as possible. Slotting the 5 points alright, slightly better distribution of the checkers by playing 13 to 7, 6 to 4. So, she, so if you come up with the 2, you give Black some opportunities and also some space behind to, to play the spare checkers. Um, so 4-2, this is going to be two checkers to the 11 point, just playing safe, which gives Black a very good distribution of the checkers. And again, 64 is a technical inaccuracy, um, just because it takes a checker beyond where it wants to potentially be 6-5 and now we've got another pure race 6-5 gives white a three pip lead but she's leading so it seems very sensible and white now has a one pip lead so all you need to do is bring the checkers down and put them in your home board and then take them off so again very little skill left in this position um, so I could play four to three, but eight to seven looks best. Oh, no, computer doesn't like that one. Okay, so it's a one pip race. So Anna is now probably pausing to do a pip count. So, as I said before, you can learn to do pip counts even if you're not particularly good at arithmetic. So it's useful to know your 13 times table, your 8 times table and your 6 times table because you always have checkers, nearly always have checkers on those points because you have checkers on those points when the game starts. So um, here uh, there are three checkers on, on the 13 point and three 13s are 39. So hopefully you don't have to work that out from first principles, you, you would know it. Um, so it's Counting is a matter of practice and a, and a few shortcuts. So double four is a great roll. So that gives her a 17 pip lead in the race. Uh, nine pips reduces that to eight. Okay, so making the three points too deep. She, uh, Alice needs to get the checkers off her midpoint and into the board. So I believe that she should have played two checkers down there. Now, doubling with an eight 
pit lead. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Double six. So that's called being lucky after your double. So leading the race, I'm not sure that was a double. Um, it was certainly a take. But I think because Black had incorrectly not cleared her midpoint, thus giving herself more crossovers, then the double was um, pleasantly aggressive um, and probably correct. Uh, if you're going to roll 2-1, that's not... Again, she should take two crossovers there. And you see the problem that Black has, that she still, even after this roll, has four crossovers to get her checkers into her home board. So one, two again, one, two, three, four again. So this is going to be a checker off, six to five. You unstack the biggest gap and the biggest gap or the biggest difference is between the six point and the five point. So there's very little difference between uh, the plays in this sort of position, and particularly because she's virtually certain to lose this game, and the computer won't punish her for any great inaccuracy. Now, Alice needs to roll two sets of doubles, basically, to have any chance whatsoever. And this game will proceed to its end, I think, without any further excitement, and it certainly will after that double four. And probably six to two again. Yeah. Easy to play when you roll well. And black could resign, but it's probably quicker just to roll it out. So it's the end of this game. Now, the score is now going to be 7-4 to Anna. Um, so in any match when you're playing, the first thing you do before you even roll the dice is to say, what is the score? What is my strategy? What is my tactics for the next game? So leading 7-4, seven, 7-4 four, seven, four is a, a reasonable lead. It gives her something like a 27% chance of, sorry, 73% chance of winning the match. Um, what Anna would really like is to win an undoubled gamut because that takes the risk out of the position because the cube is not on two. So this 6-1 is quite awkward, but this is, I think, the best play, making the bar point. Uh, Anna will, should double later than usual um, because of her lead. Um, if you put the cube on two, it comes back automatically on four on the next roll. So um, she's basically going to have to be what's called the locks, pretty much certain to win the game before she doubles. Um, double one is good. Now how do you play the fourth one? Uh, you can play six to five, you can play 17 to 16, and you can make the bold play of slotting the bar, which duplicates sixes. So given the strength of her board, I would certainly be looking at slotting the bar. Um, wouldn't have worked in this particular case. So now this is an awkward roll for, for black because it looks like you play 14 to 8 to 24 to 22. So again, she's ahead in the race, so she should be thinking of racing. The black check, the rear checkers on the 24 point need, need to get moving. So 14 to 8 and now play 24. No, you do not do that. So that's playing safe. So and gives a horrible inflexible structure. Um, as again, let me repeat what I said earlier. The checkers have to work for a living uh, and they're not. Now she has to split the rear checkers. Um, Otherwise, uh, White will have a very easy game to play. 
So the correct move here is 13 to 8, 24 to 22. So that one of the rear checkers can see daylight. So that's the correct move. Six and one. This is going to be played 16 to 10 and 8 to 7, leaving no direct shots. But white has the better board here, um, and the better structure. So if you go back two moves to Black's player, the 6-2, um, she left herself with a very, very flexible position. Five checkers on the six points at the start of the game is acceptable because you're forced into that. Um, but five checkers on the six point in the middle of the game is nearly always going to be a problem. So do you make the nine point? Four one, so two choices. You can play ten to five or you can do this. Um, I quite like this play. It duplicates one, so a lot of roll. This is not right. Um, so she's behind, whoops, no, and that's not right either. So she's behind in the race, so she shouldn't race. So she should play the structure. Uh, that's the safe play and threatens to make something next time. So, uh, but making the nine point there, I think it was clearly correct. Um, now five, four is going to play 13 to eight and probably 11 to seven. Our only concern is to escape the rear checker. 4-3, you're going to make the four point. Well, you could make the three point, but you need to look at this. This gives a more flexible position at the cost of four shots, 2-5 and 1-6, and um, because now you're threatening to make the three point and the eight point. Um, that's definitely not right. You don't want to own the two point and the eight point because they can't be part of the same prime. So. Again, the checkers have to work for a living. I would play this, but I would consider making the three point. Six and four is going to be two checkers down because there is no other play. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So black has only one rear checker to white's two, but white has a much better position. Um, so how do you play this? Um, you could play eight to four, which is safe. You can do this and come down with the three, but then the three, the check on the ten point would not be, no, you do not split when your opponent has got uh, 14 checkers in the attack zone. So Anna should be keeping that ace point anchor for quite some time yet, and deciding how to improve the position. So this is one play. Um, I, I would still pay off to two five and one six, because 2-5 plays very well on black side of the board by making the four points. So you can play more boldly. And again, you have to consider not only your position, but your opponent's position as well. That double four proves just how wrong splitting would have been. Hello. So here you make the three point and the four point. No choice. Yeah. So White was a little bit cautious on the preceding roll. Uh, if she played it correctly, she would have made one of the other points, six, five. And again, uh, this was played very quickly. Uh, I do not believe that making the one point was correct. Uh, she should have positioned the builders to make the three point. Here she should run out with the five. Um, she's way ahead in the race, so race, if you want, if you get hit, you want to be hit outside, not inside. So 6-1 is a dreadful roll. And now Black should pause to think. Right, so she is 27 pips ahead in the race. She's losing um, the match. So that should have been a double. So now Right, start two points. Okay, still a double. 24 pips is a lot, and white has got two trap checkers. So, despite the strength of white's home board, and that's just wrong, and you, you cannot kill checkers. I think I've said this during the course of this broadcast a few times. 4 1, and now she's lost her market. So, she'll make the five point, obviously. 
So it should have been double pass. Um, now, after making the five point, she'll actually be too good to double next time because uh, one, two, barring double five, there's nothing that leaves a shot next time. So now you do this. Um, you come in seven to six because now double five plays. Double five from white. So black can play on here at no cost. Um, five four, you just clear the point, obviously. White's board is going south for the winter, so black can play on for quite a while here. Just rip checkers off now because with the cube available to her, she can always win with the cube. So you're not playing for safety, you're playing for an um, double down yourself. So here you should just rip two checkers off. Yeah. Six, five. Now black has a couple of bad numbers, six, five, five, four. So here you switch one, two, and then you point. Yeah. So this resurrects the gammon opportunity. So again, but you re always reach a point in these positions where uh, you, you have to decide whether to cash the game or not. Um, and this is now cash because black can't win a gammon uh, and white can't win the game. So the game is over, double and pass. So, okay, not yet apparently. So I have no idea why she's playing on. Okay, now cash and go. Right, seven five. So. This is the famous four away, two away score. Um, and black should double with any hint of a gammon in the wind or with a powerful position. The reason for that is A, a double gammon wins you the match. And this is the wrong play at this score. You, you must play aggressively. Um, you're not interested in defence. Uh, if black loses this game, she'll be 5-8 behind. Uh, with only an 18% chance of winning the game. So uh, you can double early, the cube is then killed. Um, here you should hit. Yeah. Right, so here, what have we got? 5-3, way behind in the race. So you come in on the three point and probably play nine to four with the five because there's nothing better. Coming in here and hitting looks too big. Um, but again, you're 11 pips behind, so that has to be wrong. Um, the most important, that I know they haven't got the pip count in front of them, but the, the pip count helps to determine your strategy uh, throughout any game of backgammon. So you have to know the pip count to play well. Double six is horrible. Yeah. So now what? Five two. Um, looks like seven to two, six to four. Um, hard to find anything better. So white's well ahead in the race. Um, but here now, black needs to take advantage of white's home board. So you play thirteen to eight, six to four. So again, wrong idea. Yeah, you must look at your opponent's position before you make uh, your choice because your opponent's position determines how much risk you can take with your play. So black has now got uh, what we call candlesticks, six checkers on the six point, five checkers on the 13 point, which will make subsequent rolls very difficult to play. Now she's pretty much forced to play 13 to eight, six to five here. But you can play also this, which again it begins to build a board. But realistically, you'd quite like to have the eight point back. Um, five and two, clearing a clearing an awkward point, or you do this. Um, given the structure of black's board, this is not unreasonable. But note now that white has got four stripped points in the outfield, so she's very inflexible. So if you play two down, um, you're basically creating builders and flexibility whilst you wait for the double uh, that you can make. But th this play is fine. Now you make two, six to five is clear with the one. Um, and again, 
the way that Black has played her checkers, she's got that gap on the three point and the four point that she had on the last game, and, and that will come back to haunt. Um, I think giving up the bar point here is probably wrong. If where do you want to be hit from? Um, so sorry, didn't have time to answer my own question. This will just be thirteen to six. Sorry, thirteen to seven. Four and you play actually she should play two to one here because she'll fill in those points in her home board uh, in due course and yet again you want the checkers to work for a living so four to three is likely to be wrong two to one I much prefer so it just this this move just looks wrong um, You've got a third check on the three point, which is not working for a living. Um, she's not worried about the strength of her home board because she's not going to hit anything. So, meanwhile, Black should try to build her home board as quickly as possible in case she gets a shot. So, the right play here is 13 to 9, 7 to 4. Starting the four point, which is the next point that she wants to make. So, 7 to 4 is the right three. No, uh, wrong idea. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now um, 21, 21 pips ahead. Uh, so this looks clearly correct. You're clearing the most difficult point to clear. But, so there is an argument for 13 to 9 twice, 11 to 7 twice, because this will be quite a difficult structure to clear. So I think possibly Anna was slightly wrong in that last move. Um, so this is going to be 9 to 8, 9 to 4. Has she got a cube? Well, she's 17 pips ahead. Um, so, but it's not a volatile position, barring a double from white. Um, and she would love to get to Crawford with her opponent on an even, uh, an odd number. So you always want your opponent on an odd number when you get to Crawford. Three and two, so now we are 13 pips ahead. Uh, but again, this, because of the score, this is not a double for some time. Uh, an eight pip lead is, seven pip lead is insufficient to double anyway. So this is absolutely not a double at this score because then this uh, Alice would redouble on the next roll and this game would be for the match. Um, so she does not have the threat that you normally have in positions like this, but even in a money game, this would not be a double because of the contact which favours black. So obviously she's now pausing to do a pick count. She's still got seven minutes of, on the clock. So this is quite a nice roll. Clears the spare checker off the nine. Um, well, this is not unreasonable. Um, if she does this, what's bad, if anything? All right, five and three. Not yet time to give up the anchor because it just leaves white small numbers to play extremely well. So my question is, do you kill another checker? You've just killed one checker. Um, there's a small argument for six to one, six to three here. Um, so how pure does black want her position to be after the roll? If she plays seven to four, seven to two, then she's forced off next time with a six. Um, but she has a much better structure for the bear off. So. Swings and roundabouts, as in many games of that game. Now, if Alice rolls a six, she'll be leaving. And she's leaving. So the six is clear. How do you play the two? So crossovers are important. So probably play 14 to 12 here rather than five to three because uh, the threes will play well 
anyway later on. So it is a race, and after the race, it will only be a six pit race. So 14 to 12 looks illogical. This is definitely wrong. Um, six and three, well, now she has to play for the race. So now it's a two pit race. And again, White does not have a double in this position. That's a horrible roll for Black. And again, they're, they're slotting the three point might have been better with the ace, but uh, tiny, tiny differences. So six five is a good roll. Uh, six two brings both checkers in. So it's a six pip race. There's still a double for money, definitely, uh, but not at this score. Four and two, two off, three and two. So again, the, the empty three points not half as damaging as an empty four point because the threes play well. So now we've got a seven pit lead. Um, and now you need to start thinking about match equity tables and all sorts of things to decide whether this is a double or not. Uh, oh, double three. One, two, three, four. Two pit race, so ooh, and there you see what goes wrong when you've got an empty four point. Great roll, but no checkers off. But now she needs to think. So 23 to 34, six, 10 checkers plays 10 checkers. So that I believe should have been a double. Um, two, two, four, eight. Now it's not a double because the 4 2 was awful. That's a winning roll and that's the end of this game. It doesn't matter. So it's a three roll position, but it isn't really because Black's ones missed and all sorts of things missed. Um, so White's winning, Black's winning chance from here is, is about 6 7%, probably, maybe 10 at most. So, um, this can't possibly be a take. So if she drops, she'll be trailing 5-8 to Crawford with 18% chance of winning. Did she have 18% chance if she took? No. So um, it's a very clear and easy decision. Now we're at Crawford. You can only win the game with your checkers. Now 4-3, if your opponents rolled an early double, big double, you don't split the back checkers. So that is wrong. Thanks, Fisher. So uh, now what? One, two, so you can make the 23 point as a safeguard. Yeah. Uh, and again, don't forget, white, uh, black has to win this game. So she needs to position her checkers um, in a position where she can influence the outcome of the game. So this will be 13 to 9. Uh, it could even be 13 to 11 because. White's not going to hit with many of her aces, and it brings another build in position. 5 2. Going while the going is good, I believe that is called. So, what else? We play 13 to 8, 6 to 4. Um, or 13 to 6. I don't like 13 to 6, it doesn't do anything. Um, but she is 38 pips ahead. So. Now only five or eight, so that's a good roll for black. Three, six, in and out, no discussion. Four, hit with the four, down with the five. Nothing to, to really think about here. She could play 13 to nine to four, but Again, black can only win with the checkers. This is the Crawford game, so this is correct. One six. So there'll be a lot of return shots to into hit three. So the game's playing itself for a moment, so we can relax. Another hit. Five two. Another hit. In with a five. Hit with a two. Four three. Another hit. Ah, uh, three six. Awful. Hit with the one. Whatever you do, you hit with the one. Yeah, well played. So can't allow black to make the five point. Um, so this is 
clearly the best play here. And this is clearly not the best play. So now if that makes a five point after this play, uh, then she's in the game forever with, with good chances. But if you play 13 to 7, 6 to 5, black doesn't bother by. She's in a huge amount of trouble. So you take a small risk now for a large game. Yeah, well played if she manages to do this. And fans again. So severe trouble now for black. One. Now, do you hit on the ace point? Because if you allow black to make the ace point with by rolling a one, then she's got a well timed one two game. So she should, Anna should hit six to one. Well played. That's the correct play. And again, learning not to fear things in backgammon is one of the keys. So six is make the ace point, the one is eight to seven, creating another builder for the four point, which is now the most important point on the board. Okay. No, don't do that. There's no point in moving safely or trying to win the game. Six, four, two down. Too much choice. Double one. Three, two. Right, now you, again you need to position the builder. So the correct play is 13 to 10, 8 to 6, which gives basically uh, total coverage of the four point. So even double four is not, uh, gives black a game, but um, barring a double from white next time, she will make no, this is wrong. Mm, no. Okay, so. Now she should have made the four point, but because she played weakly and safely, um, then she didn't do it. So now she's been lucky enough to roll something that makes the four point, but she should have been making it far more easily than she has done. Seven to four with a three is correct, because again, you want the flexible placement of the checkers. So a two point holding game, two, so against a two point game you normally rip checkers off rather than play for safety. Um, then here you probably play those six to three. Uh, once you clear the six point in a bear off uh, against an opponent's anchor you reduce your chances of being hit by about 30%. So the quicker she can clear the six point the better off she's going to be. So. Uh, this is also okay. Now clear the six point, so that's reduced her chance of being hit considerably. Now what does black do? Black needs to build a board as quickly as possible. So I think eight to five would have been the best play there. So Anna's rolling well. Now at most black's going to get one shot here. So she has to assume obviously going to lose the game. She doesn't, so she must start her points. Uh, yeah, five three is correct. Three one, make your five point. Yeah. Okay, now don't roll six two, five two, or four two. Four three is great, it's fine. So again, you have to assume you're gonna hit, so make the bar. No, you make the bar. You're not interested in bearing checkers in. You're going to lose if you do that anyway. One, two, three, and make the bar now. So you've got a block. Four two. Okay, now key roll coming up. Oh, right. Double six. <coughs> you don't go off the anchor because that gives white a good double one. Yeah, now she'll probably get it now. Key moment. She gets a shot, misses. She should not surrender yet because white could still roll double one. No, so now she has zero chance of winning. Um, well, that's the end of the match. So thank you for listening. Um, uh, a flawed game in many ways, but like any that game match, interesting. There are positions that you you can learn from from there. Uh, the players should now analyze the match to understand their own mistakes. 
so I have a rule when I finish a match, I always analyse it before I play another match. Um, that's the only good discipline in, in how you teach yourself to play. And obviously you need to have extreme gammon at home to run the game, the match through that, uh, through the software. Um, so our counterparts of 30 years ago couldn't do that, which is why progress was slower back then. But now we have that facility, so we have to use it. So thank you for listening. Um, the next round, I believe, starts at uh, 1.30, I think. So time for lunch. Right, thank you for that. So time for a brief spot of lunch possibly and then a return to the matches at uh, 1.30. So uh, I will not be... Com who's commentating at 1.30? Uh, you... Right. Right, and then at three o'clock it's Tim Cross doing the commentary. Yeah. All right. That was very good. Enjoy okay. Here. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck to everyone. And as a reminder to all the players, play more slowly. If you've got time, use it. Okay. I'll pass that on. Thank you. Okay. Cheers for now. Bye. Bye. That was good. All good fun. Somewhat flawed. I mean,